How are you? I must say that it's been too long. I am, um, you know, I have never been in a situation in my life before where, you know, there has been such a long pause. But I guess the world has, uh, um, you know, not encountered this type of situation in the recent recent history. So I'm looking forward to coming back. You know, I have, I have been conducting quite a lot uh, with Don Halle Orchestra in Zurich and many other orchestras, Philharmonia and NDR and, 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 and Berlin Philharmonic and, and so on. So, uh, you know, the smaller orchestras actually um, is something that I'm quite used to at the moment. And I, I think that um, it gives the opportunity simply to see the same repertoire a little bit in a different light. The program actually was designed already a while ago and even before we knew anything about the pandemic. So it just happens to be sort of a very timely uh, message in the repertoire, you know, Nielsen Symphony, inextinguishable, when he's talking about the kind of inextinguishable will of people to go on and survive and, and not give in and give up um with the nils and yeah that's that's to, for my for my opinion or in my opinion uh, this is one of the greatest of 20th century um symphonists uh, many people when asked who is you know the the representative the great 20th century composer they would automatically would go to perhaps uh, Shostakovich or uh, Prokofiev. Well, without any doubt, Sibelius is, is, is among the greats and among the most original. And uh, Nielsen, I think even more, has found a unique language that, that, that is unmistakably, unmistakably his. It's a funny thing with Arbo Parrot is that every time he writes something, even though it's very quiet, very contemplative, and on the surface, it seems somewhat simple. But actually, when you start looking at it and how it's put together and what it actually symbolizes and, and how it makes you feel, it, it, is, it is very profound, as you say, and, and it is, it's, it's very deeply moving. And um, he has this uncanny ability to quietly get into your soul. Um, and especially in today's world where there's so, there's so much noise and so much unnecessary noise, uh, uh, his voice is, I think, incredibly important because he is saying the right things and the right way. He says a profound messages quietly. Well, a Sibelius concerto is, is, is in no need of introduction. It's one of the most famous violin concerti, of course. If we start looking for um, the great standard repertoire for violin, if we look at, you know, Brahms, Beethoven, Tchaikovsky, um, you know, Sibelius concerto stands out as one of the unusual but yet most original violin concerti in the Romantic era. And always fresh and always a challenge for a player. My hope is really is to get some food for soul and just enjoy it, not overthink it, you know, because it has been a, such a, a long period of, of of sort of coasting, not knowing which way uh, we are going to go and, and seeing this kind of curious pandemic uh, evolve. And, and it has been a kind of stressful and difficult time for a lot of people. So if there is one way to really let go and listen and, and enjoy is to listen to a concert.
what I can say is that my decision to stay here in quarantine for, for two weeks and come back to Japan for one week of concerts um, has a lot to do with a, a special bond that I feel with the orchestra. And of course, I am a chief conductor of the orchestra still, so that the, the, the responsibility to come here is, is, is clearly felt by me. And also a very strong connection to the Japanese audience. I feel that uh, there is a bond and there's a connection. And that was a very much of a determining factor of me deciding to come here. And so I hope to see everybody, even if they don't come this time, everybody next, next time for our next and my final season as a chief conductor.